Customer Service Award for Highest Client Ratings, D Magazine's Best Realtor, Five Star Professional Award, and several other recognitions for her success and service to clients. Join her each week as she meets with the top community influencers to help you get to know the area you want to call home. Don't just love your home, love your community. And now, here's your host, Kimberly Woodard. Good afternoon, viewers. I'm so excited about today's podcast. You're going to learn so much about an organization um, here and dear to my heart in Plano. I've got Nancy Humphreys here, and she is the executive director for the Hendricks Scholarship Foundation. Welcome, Nancy. Well, thank you for having me, Kimberly. Hello. This is exciting to be here. Thank I'm you. so glad to, uh, you know, to have you here and for you to share um, information about this organization okay. to my viewers. Awesome. So let's first talk about Nancy. Uh, <laughs> Who is Nancy? <laughs> I don't like having to talk about myself, but okay. Yes. So, you know, let's tell the viewers a little bit. Before you became the executive director for Hendricks, you okay. had some um, background yeah. and that really um, helped you with this role. Okay. Well, sure. I actually have served for 10 years on the Plano ISD Board of Trustees yes. uh, in various capacities throughout the years and worked legislatively. I, I have partnered with other higher ed individuals at the legislative level. So we kind of have some good connections there. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm connected in the community in a way. And education is a passion for me. And I understand that education is the way for individuals to be successful in life. Right, right. And that kind of brings us to the Hendricks Scholarship Foundation exactly. and how you got into this organization. So, you know, let's, you know, kind of, you know, Hendricks was founded. Um, and the reason it's named Hendricks is because of the former superintendent, Dr. Right, Hendricks, right. which I have to say he was there when I was in Plano. Now I'm aging myself. No, you're not. <laughs> so, and that, so I always thought it was a dear to my heart because I was right. you know, um, participating in something that was named after one of the superintendents when I was right. going through the schools. But let's um, let's go into, you know. The mission and what about the um, Hendrick Scholarship Foundation? Okay. Well, Dr. Hendrick was our superintendent in Plano ISD for 30 years, 1961 to 1991. Did he manage a little bit of change? Yes. I think so. And <laughs> yeah. I have to credit him with a lot of the success of Plano ISD mm -hmm. overall. But he had a mission that um, the circumstances that a child is born into as far as economic stability of the family should not limit their opportunity to go to college. Right. And so some of the leaders in Plano, um, upon Dr. Hendricks' retirement, decided to honor him with the Hendricks Scholarship Foundation. And they had one student who they brought into the Scholarship Foundation mm -hmm. to take through college and support him and mentor him through the process. And it's grown over the years to where we now have 66 students on scholarship. Wow. Wow. That's a that's a good number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, the mentoring and what's neat about this organization, and we'll um, go to your point, is uh -huh. the mentoring. So many scholarship um, foundations that are out there, you apply, your kids apply for them, they get a scholarship, and that's about it. They, right. they get their check, and they never hear anything. So let's, you know, to kind of dive into a little bit more about you know, how this organization is different for okay. our students and how it's, you know, what, you know, the mission of the board is to really make these people, uh, these potential um, people in the workforce successful. Exactly. Individuals. Exactly. And, you know, it has an economic impact on the state of Texas economy. It so, does. or an impact on the economy. Of but, um, what we do, we understand that you can't just hand a student a check and say good luck right. um, because the students we serve are not necessarily, you're, you're not getting a scholarship because your GPA average. You're getting it because you are in need of a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a set of students that needs that extra support through the process right. uh, throughout their entire journey of college. Mm -hmm. And so we provide a coach, an academic coach for every student. We call them a success coach. Yes. Every student has a trusted adult that helps them and mentors them through the process. They have uh, periods or touch points throughout the semester. Right. They check in with their coach. And that is part of the secret sauce that makes our organization successful. Yes. The other part of it is we have a full-time academic advisor on staff. And she meets with our students every semester 
give some academic advising on their degree plan, making sure they're on track. Right. Because what's ironic is if you look at the entire state of Texas right now, all students, 26% of them graduate six years after high school with some sort of post-secondary credential. Wow. All right. The state has an initiative to do 60 by 30. They want that number to be 60% by 30, 2030. Wow. That's a huge That's a undertaking. That's huge, huge. But what I would say is the Hendrick Scholarship Foundation really helps out in that regard. 26% of all students graduate mm -hmm. in from college, college into six years. But if economically disadvantaged students, that number is only 12%. Uh, so we are helping move the needle with those students definitely. because we understand you can't just hand them a check. Right. You've got to be there with them through the journey. Right. And we also offer life skills training workshops yes. in financial literacy, uh, budgeting, you know, how to f sign a lease, right. how to apply for the federal aid, things like that. And I think one point to make with what makes it different, too, is the demographics that do apply um, for the scholarships. Many of these um, students are the first in their family to ever further their education out of high school. Right. And so, you know, having that mentor um, that understands what they're going through mm -hmm. is a good backbone. They need that because they don't necessarily have that from the home. Um, not, you know, in a negative way, but they do need that um, of what mm -hmm. they're going through. And a lot of these students also work 40 hour jobs right. to support not themselves, but their actual families exactly. and units. Exactly. And so it's a different, um, you know, whole different ball game. And I also, I think people don't, you know, and a lot of people in our audience don't really think of Plano having this disadvantaged, mm -hmm. you know, um, segment in the city but we do <laughs> we do and and you you know it's it's and it's, it's hard to greater. it's hard to always see that when you drive through you know legacy west or some of these very affluent areas right. but my data from what i know in the school yes. district is on any given day we have 30 percent economically disadvantaged students right. based on the free and reduced lunch program and if you counted students in our district who are considered homeless there are 500 on any given day that's wow. a that's a number that i don't think a lot of people realize yeah. so there's a great need and we're trying to help fill that need right and you're right the students sometimes are working yes and we give them a six-year window to complete a baccalaureate degree okay that gives them that ability to work and go to school if they need mm -hmm. and we try to be there that coach to support them because right. not not everybody's parent really is encouraging them for to be in college right right and they don't see path. the they don't see the benefit at the end of four years right. or six years but right. we're helping them get that support that they may not be getting from home and I think that's a wonderful thing um, and we're also encouraging them making them successful you mm -hmm. know making them a successful individual um, to Bring up our numbers in the state of Texas. <laughs> well, and, okay, and, and you're probably going to laugh at me. I'm kind of a numbers geek because yeah. I'm an accountant by trade. <laughs> but okay. and this is a this is a great visual. Think of a student who graduates with a baccalaureate degree, right? And a student who does not have a baccalaureate degree. The the overall earnings differential in a lifetime is a million dollars in constant wow. dollars right now. That has economic impact. So if we can help students gain that credential right. to have that workforce yes. we will be not only helping these students but the overall economy in Collin County and beyond oh, oh definitely definitely well let's talk about some of our students that are in the program okay and um, because that's you know such a joy and I always have such a amazing time meeting these students and um, usually you know we'll meet them at events and you know the once a year um, holiday event right and talking to them and I'm so impressed with some of these students um, degrees right. I, <laughs> I I'm like wow what is that? you know I'm just shocked right. um, and they're you know they are very intelligent and very inspired right. um, individuals um, you know seeking you know a really you know 
high plateau. So. Right. Well, they have the desire, the grit, and the determination. Yes. They just lack the financial and, right. and, and maybe some of the at. some of the stewarding, but some of the students we have right now, and I know this because I'm writing the checks yes. to the colleges <laughs> right. this week. Yes. We're, we're writing tuition that's, checks, that's, and so one student is um, at University of Texas Arlington. I mean Austin, excuse me, and she is studying veterinary medicine pre pre vet, oh, nice. and then we have. Um, I mean, we just, we run the gamut. I would say 20% of our students are in education. Okay. And maybe about 18% are in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And then the balance, a lot of them are in engineering. Yes. And then we have a smattering of others. We have one student who's at Dallas Baptist University, and you probably saw him at Taste last oh, okay. year. He's a musician, and he's yes. going to probably... Um, wow us with being a music professor somewhere so wow. it, amazing kids yes. amazing kids well and it's amazing you know, the, the stories of success and then after you know we'll see our graduates come and mm -hmm. it's that's the biggest reward is to see them finish their degrees right um and then where are they now in the jobs that they have and the opportunities right. and I do love it too is that they come back and that they're willing to help again. So exactly. that's a really nice thing. Exactly. So. Well we had um, I think six students that graduated in the last semester. We had a, a pretty big Number, graduating class. Right. And they, they don't always graduate at certain semester, fall right. or spring. Mm -hmm. But one of our, and, and every student we sponsor or mm -hmm. prov provide support to, had some harm, hardship they overcame. Right. And this one particular student I'm thinking of just finished his degree in computer science. Mm -hmm. He has cerebral palsy oh. and is handicapped. Wow. But he has a job at American Airlines in their IT department, and he is cooking with gas. He is moving that, and shaking. That is amazing. Yeah. I mean, that just shows determination and the willingness right. to do. And then also the support. I really think that support mechanism mm -hmm. is such the caveat that makes this organization so different from everything else is that support. Um, piece. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they really want the students to be successful. And the mentors, you know, that are there to help them and the tutors, I mean, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're people that are in the workforce, mm -hmm. the tutors, some of them are retired and um, teachers, but the coaches are, you know, they're, you know, working at these big firms and right. different, um, different firms around the um, area. So they really have that worth ethics and really can coach that student. Right. So. I mean, we are very fortunate to live in this area and have our organization here because of the corporate support that right. we have. Um, it's and, and um, it's mainly in volunteering. It's yeah. not always necessarily in dollars, but that is the piece that really sets us apart right. is having those coaches. I believe that's what roots us to the community yes. and keeps the organization and the student success going. No, I agree. I agree. Well, let's talk about, you know, there's always ways that, you know, we're going to talk about one way that I know people are sitting there going, gosh, this sounds really interesting. And mm -hmm. um, this may be something for me. Um, and I'm hoping that a lot of my viewers out there. And um, so let's first address um, if you are in a corporation, you know, how right. could a corporation maybe help the organization okay. um, as maybe, you know, maybe a scholarship? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm proud to say we actually have an employee scholarship. The employees have contributed to to bring a student through their uh, through the college process from Toyota, and so that's a wonderful uh, yes. thing. I mean, employees have contributed, and it doesn't take volumes of money. Right. It's just a lot of employees giving a little. So yes. that's one way. But the other way is in volunteering. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we have students who are engineering majors. We right. could always use people who are professionals in that field right. who could be a tutor to our students. Okay. All right. And um, also coaching. We could always use a coach that I think the coaches get something back more than the students receive right. in the process of being a coach. I hear that every time I talk to a coach. They're like, wow, this is so enriching for me. Yes. And I didn't even expect that when I went into coaching. But helping a student and a young person get through that process is right. just very meaningful. But we also have some fun events coming up Absolutely. and to mark your calendar for. So <laughs> let's talk about that. Okay. And because, you know, we do have North Texas Giving Day and everyone's out there, you know, 
looking at an organization um, that maybe they could get, um, give to you uh, for North Texas Giving Day. And, right. you know, that was one reason I wanted to share this organization with my audience is because this is a dear organization to my heart. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to share it with y'all um, out there. So maybe if you're looking for an organization to give a North Texas Giving Day, you may consider the Hendricks Scholarship Foundation. Right. So let's talk Absolutely. about what you have going on okay. that fun um, time. So it, okay. it starts September 9th through the 19th. That's and, right. And um, you have some stuff going on so you can, you can begin um, donating online the 9th through the 19th. Right. 19th is usually the day. Yes. And so um, before the 19th, we're participating with 50 other nonprofits mm-hmm. at the Willow Bend Mall. Okay. North Texas Performing Arts is hosting a day. Oh, nice. And so we will be there to just have fun. Have mm-hmm. fun and yeah. promote North Texas Giving Day on Saturday, September 14th okay. from 9 to 5 at the shops of Willow Bend. Oh, wonderful. And then we are having our own watch party. I'm excited. Oh, and fun. I hope you're there. <laughs> and we'll have a little wine if Yay! you want. Because it'll be at Corner Wines okay. in Plano. Okay. And people can come. And it's a $10 charge. Okay. But they get a free wine or a wine tasting. Oh, and it's a great little place if anyone hasn't been there. It's um, there on Preston off in Lakeside right. Shopping Center. Exactly. And so um, the owners are generous enough to let us have our event there that night and they're going to have a a discount on some of the bottles of wine for our guests so it pays for itself in a way and so we can watch the dollars roll in and what's exciting is for north texas giving day i have some individuals who are putting up matching funds so we can watch our ticker go up and hopefully those matching funds will lever the dollars that are coming in for that day. So I'm excited that that'll be a successful fundraiser. Oh, that was going to be so much fun. So, you know, you've got two great events that you can go to. Um, and if you want to even learn more about the organization, you can, um, again, we'll have our website at the bottom of uh, my podcast. And so you can click on that link. And Hendricks also has a big um, event coming up in the spring, um, the Uh taste the taste and correct. so that will be something that you can look forward to and mark your calendars for its um, uh, you know we don't I don't, don't have, have the, the date, date yet okay. but it's but it'll coming be between February and March yeah. time frame a little before it's, spring break hopefully so, so yes so in, the, in that in that pocket of time for 2020 mm-hmm. so wonderful so I'm so you know so glad that you're here, Nancy, and we that we had the time to talk about the Hendricks um, Scholarship Foundation with my viewers. And again, everyone, please remember this organization during North Texas Giving Day, um, and you know consider that you know this as an organization to give to. Well, thank you very much, and I have to say thank you for serving on our board of trustees. <laughs> oh my, my pleasure. Well, cheers, Nancy. Cheers, cheers to us, and cheers to the Hendricks Scholarship. All right, thank you, thank you so you. much. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Community Cocktails with Kimberly. If you'd like to contact Kimberly with your real estate needs, you can reach her at KimberlyWoodard.Evie.com. Hope you enjoyed our guest this week. Tune in every first and third Wednesday of the month for insights from industry leaders in your DFW area. Remember, don't just love your home, love your community.